गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स आई होप एवरी वन इज डूइंग वेल आई रिक्वेस्ट एवरी वन टू वॉच मई वीडियो इन ए सीक्वे फर् बेटर अंडर्स्टांग इन दिस वीडियो ई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस द सोल्यूशन फर् कंट्रोल हजार ई हेव आलरे डिस्कस्ड वाट आर द टाइप्स ऑफ हजार वी विल गेट वेन वी आर एक्सिक्यूटिंग द इंस्ट्रक्शन इन द पाइप लाइन वी विल हेव डेटा हजार we have structural hazards and we have control hazards i have discussed the types of data hazards such as read after write write after read and write after write i have discussed the solution called operand forwarding to avoid the read after write hazard and also i have discussed the solution called register renaming okay to avoid the write after read and write after write data hazards then we have discussed what is a structural hazard and how to avoid the structural hazard with the concept called resource duplication means we will not completely eliminate we will minimize it the structural hazards then we have discussed what is a control hazard if you have not watched what is the control hazard i request you to watch the video if you want the link for that video the dis in the description section i have provided the link for the earlier video you can watch the that video so that you will understand the control hazards in a detail now anyway i will just give an overview of control hazards the control hazards will come because of the program control instructions we have various types of instructions such as data transfer instructions data movement instructions and program control instructions what are the program control instructions we have branch instructions we have jump instruction we have skip instruction and we have call and return instructions so i have discussed about these instructions also in one of my previous videos what is the branch instruction will do we have two types of branch instruction one is conditional branch instruction unconditional branch instruction if it is an unconditional branch instruction branch some 2000 location if i give it like this then it has to execute the next instruction which is there in the 2000 location usually whenever we are executing the instructions we will think that i not i1 i2 let's take that i not is in 100 location i1 is in 101 location i not i2 is there in 102 location then we will have a program controller what is the purpose of program control register the program controller is a special purpose register which consists of the address of the next instruction now when you are executing the i not instruction you will have the 101 instruction when you are executing the address or executing the instruction i1 you will have the address of instruction i2 which is 102 let's take that here instruction i1 you have a br unconditional branch instruction branch 2000 is there then what is the meaning you have to go and fetch the instruction which is there in the location 2000 but what is the program controller is there the program controller is having the address as 102 now what value you have to do you have to update the 2000 here and you have to go and fetch that instruction and get it now if i use the pipeline if it is conditional or unconditional the same thing if i use the pipelining what will happen we will discuss then why we are calling it as a control hazard also we will discuss okay now let's take that i not and i1 and i2 instructions are there i not what i will do i will fetch the instruction let's take that i have four stage pipeline instruction fetch instruction decode execute and write back is there these are the four stages are there okay then i have instruction i1 is there okay which is instruction fetch instruction decode execute write back i will do am i right usually whenever we are performing the instruction decode of i not in the meantime i will fetch the instruction i1 this is what the pipeline to improve the system performance because we have made it into stages in between the stages we will have a 
register. So the output of the instruction fetch will be stored in the register and it will act as an input for the next stage. So when I0 is doing the instruction fetch, I1 will not do. But however, when I0 is doing the instruction decode stage, the I1 will do the instruction fetch. Let's take that it is a branch instruction 2000, unconditional branch instruction. Okay, but when you will come to know that it is an unconditional branch instruction and where you are supposed to go. Am I right? Where you will come to know when you will execute the instruction. Am I right? Because when you decode the instruction, you will understand what is the instruction mode and what is the op code and what is the operation. But you need to execute that instruction and you should understand that it is a branch instruction and you have to go to that particular location. Even it is an unconditional branch, even if it is a conditional branch also, you should execute the condition, then only you will understand whether the condition is true or false. If the condition is true, you will go to target address location. If the condition is false, you will go and execute the next instruction. But if you see that in the pipeline, before you go to the clock cycle 1, 2, 3, 4, before, after the clock cycle 4, before that, we would have fetched the next instruction and even we have performed the decode also. Am I right? And similarly instruction 3, I would have fetched it. Then what will happen? Suppose let's take that it is a branch instruction, whether it is a conditional or unconditional, let's take that condition is true. If it is an unconditional, I no need to worry about the condition. So next instruction I should fetch it as which is there in the 2000 location. Let's take that in 2000 location, I have instruction I20. Then what I should do? I have understood that I have to go and fetch the instruction which is I20. But in the meantime, I have fetched and decoded the instruction I2 and I have fetched the instruction I3. Will it be useful for me? No, because next instruction I should execute is I20. So what instruction I should have supposed to fetch I20? But why I did not done, it is not the pipeline mistake because it understood that next instruction should be I2 and I3 so it was started fetching. But as suddenly it became a branch instruction and you should execute I20 then these one are waste for us because I should fetch the I20 instruction from here because I came to know that the branch instruction it is I20 so I will fetch the instruction I20. But in the meantime what should I do? I have fetched these instructions, then what should I do? I have to flush all the instructions. Flush means I have to remove these instructions from the pipeline because I cannot do. One is that flushing and second one is that you should delay that one. Delay that one. Once you understood that it is a branch instruction, you should not perform instruction fetch or instruction decode of next instruction. You just wait for some time. You just predict that it is a branch instruction and don't do anything and wait for the target address. Is it clear? That is another one. And another thing is that you can predict the branch. Are you able to understand? If you predict the branch, that what we will discuss about the branch prediction. So we can go for the delayed branch. Delayed branch means we will have the stall cycles. We will not do anything. Instead of doing something, and again redoing it waste, I'll just be idle, I will save my energy, are you able to understand? That is what the delayed branching technique. I will discuss about the delayed branching. First let me discuss about the branch prediction and even we can do another thing also. Once we understood that it is a branch instruction, we will not know what is the target address. Before that, what I will do is that I will execute the dummy instruction. That is what we will call it as executing um, instructions which will not reflect the this instruction. So we will execute some dummy instructions such as load or stored instruction which will complete in one clock cycle. Because load and store instructions will complete in one clock cycle, they will not depend on others. So I will execute instead of not doing any operation, that's what we will call it as no operation or stall cycles, instead of doing that one, I will complete the load and store instructions, we will call them as dummy instructions or we will do the reshuffling. Obviously, if I am doing the load instructions, because let's take that I0, I1, 
there is an i1 is a branch instruction somewhere in i10 and i11 i have a load instruction and store instruction in the meantime i will reshuffle them because i understood that it is a branch instruction instead of fetching i2 and i3 i will execute this i10 and i11 which will not affect anything because if i shuffle them it will not change anything such a way i have to select those instructions are you able to understand so we will call them as instruction reshuffling because we are bringing the i10 and i11 and we are execute don't worry if you does not understand how i am doing i will discuss in the next video about it properly how to execute these instructions so in this video i will discuss about branch prediction okay you predict the branch you understood that okay it is a branch so let's take that when we will predict it let's take that simply you have a conditional branch you have a branch equal sum let's take it simple i will give a one conditional branch branch equal r1 comma r2 2000 meaning is that this instruction meaning is that you have a two registers r1 and r2 if their content is equal then you will go and fetch the instruction which is there in 2000 and execute it if they are not equal you will execute the next instruction which is there suppose let's take that it is in 100 location the next instruction you should fetch it is 101 so the next address will be depend on whether these two contents are having equal value two registers or not if they are having equal value the target address will be 2000 if they are not equal then the target address will be 101 am i right or wrong so what i will do is that i will go for the prediction is it clear the prediction can be two ways one is static prediction another one is dynamic prediction okay one is static prediction and another one is dynamic prediction what is meant by static prediction i will always assume that branch will not happen is it clear branch will not happen and i will fetch the next instruction branch will not happen meaning is that i will always assume that this condition will not be true are you able to understand branch will not happen means the next instruction will be in 101 102 like that i will fetch it okay but once i come to know that no 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 my prediction is wrong i will flush everything whatever i have done till now and i will go and fetch the instruction which is there in 2000 and sometimes what i will do is that i will assume that the branch will happen see here there are two condition the branch can be true or false if the condition is true then we'll go for the 2000 location and fetch the instruction am i right or wrong if the branch is fail or the condition is fail i will do 101 so in the static prediction whatever the situation is i will assume that either it is true or false let's take that i am assuming true always the branch will happen so what i will do i will fetch the instruction which is there in 2000 location if i came to know that my prediction is wrong again i will flush everything and i will start executing the instructions which are there in 101 102 like that are you able to understand so this is called the static prediction suppose like that if you go for a cricket match are you able to understand the toss will be there there will be two options whether head and tail suppose let's take that some captain has a sentiment that telling every time head then what he will say whatever the situation it is or whoever the opposite captain who are who are the person is throwing he will just say that head are you able to understand if it finally comes as a head he won the toss otherwise he lost the toss are you able to understand so this is called static prediction every time i am going for a simple one any one either condition is true or condition is false i will assume that it is a condition is true is con is my prediction then i will do accordingly if the output came in the wrong then i will flush it is it clear so this one we will call it as a static prediction now we will discuss about the dynamic prediction okay what is dynamic prediction is that first let assume that i have predicted that the branch not taken okay i have predicted that branch has not taken let's take that for that instruction branch has not taken then my prediction is correct then the performance of the system is increased because whatever the instructions i have fetched they will be executed suppose let's take that branch has taken then what i will do 
I will flush all these things and I will go and fetch the instruction which is there in 2000 location which is I20. Then what I should do? Okay, my prediction is wrong. So next time I will predict that branch is taken. So I am changing my opinion. Are you able to understand? Suppose you are executing instruction I0. Here you have predicted that branch will not happen. And you have done everything. However, branch has taken. Means the condition is true and it has happened. Then what you will do? When you are executing the next instruction, when it is a branch instruction, you will change your, okay, last time I have predicted that branch is not taken and it was taken. I have predicted not taken, but it was happened wrong. So let me predict now it as branch is taken. Let's take that he has predicted branch is taken and it was done also. Even it was a, let's take that he has branch prediction some 3000 and he predicted that the branch will happen here and he has fetched the 3000 instruct instructions which are there in the 3000 location and executed. So next time what he will do whenever there is a branch instruction, okay my prediction is true, let me predict the same thing. That is what the dynamic prediction. So you, if your condition is true means whatever the prediction you are doing, if it is true, you will next time also you will be in the same state. So I have taken two states here. A where is branch is not taken and the branch is taken. So how I'll assign, I'll take some variable. If I'm assuming that branch is not taken, I'll keep it as zero. If I assume that branch is taken, I will keep it as one. So if I'm predicting branch is not, means is not taken. If it is not taken, I will be there. My prediction is correct. Next time also, I will predict the same thing. Am I right or wrong? And then if let's say that he has not, he has predicted that it was not taken and it has taken, means branch was happened. Then next time when he want to predict, he will pre predict that branch is taken. So that is what the state diagram I have discussed for the dynamic prediction. So I hope you have understood what is a control hazard and how, what is the way we have to predict the branches. One is static prediction and another one is dynamic prediction. Which is better? Dynamic prediction is better. Are you able to understand? However, there is some problem. Instead of static prediction, better go for the dynamic prediction. Thank you for watching my video. If you still have any doubts related to this concept, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts in less than 24 hours. And this concept is very, very important for the gate exam. So I request you to watch the video completely. And if you want to take the gate exam seriously, please watch all my videos in a sequence. Thank you for watching my video. Have a nice day.